As an aside here, we have to introduce the concept of identifiability. So here we have the proof that we used, where we used ignorability to show that the average treatment effect is equal to the associational difference. And the important thing is that the average treatment effect um, is a difference between two causal quantities, whereas the associational difference is a difference between two statistical quantities. So identifiability is going from causal quantities to statistical quantities. It's important to get statistical quantities in the end because these are what we actually have access to when we're just looking at samples from the joint distribution P of X, T, Y. We say that a causal quantity, such as expected value of Y, T, is identifiable if we can compute it from a purely statistical quantity, such as expected value of Y conditioned on T. All right, so ignorability slash exchangeability is a very important assumption because it gives us identifiability of the causal effect. But how reasonable is this assumption? Is there any way that we can make sure this assumption is satisfied? And that's what randomized control trials are for. They can actually make this assumption be satisfied. So a randomized control trial is where you flip a coin to determine what group each individual goes into if they get treatment equals 1 or treatment equals 0. As an example of this, consider the example we saw before where there was drunk people going to sleep with shoes on and then waking up with headaches. Okay, so the treatment groups looked like this, where treatment is sleeping with shoes on. So most of the people who were sleeping with shoes on were drunk. Most of the people who were sleeping without shoes on were sober. What a randomized experimenter would do here is, first of all, they would change what T means. So T equals 1 would change from meaning went to sleep with shoes on to just slept with shoes on. And similarly, T equals 0 would change from went to sleep without shoes on to just slept without shoes on. So you'll see why that's important. So the experimenter would go into a bunch of drunk people's rooms and then flip a coin to decide whether or not to take their shoes off that they had gotten into bed with. And similarly, they would go into a bunch of sober people's rooms and flip a coin to decide whether or not to put shoes on the sober people who are sleeping, you know, as one does. And the effect that this would have is that it would make the groups totally comparable. So by running a randomized control trial, the experimenter has eliminated confounding. Randomized control trials also have a very nice graphical interpretation. So if this is the graph, the causal graph of the data generating process, so X is a confounder of the effect of T on Y, a randomized control trial would mean that the way that the treatment is assigned is just a function of a coin flip. So there should be no edge from X to T. And by running a randomized control trial, by randomizing treatment, we remove this edge, which removes confounding. This brings us to our next recall question. What important property does an RCT give us?